Hi everyone, Mr. Morgan Lewis here at the school. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about jumping or jumping kicks in general. Uh, we had an inquiry from a student some time ago um, asking how to improve the jump spinning kick and uh, obviously gave them the advice, but I thought it'd be nice to share that adv same advice with everybody so that everyone that is learning how to do jump kicks can benefit from it. Um, his main question was, um, how do I improve my technique? How do I you know, make it so I can jump higher and things like that? So I'm just going to show you some, show and describe some tips to you to uh, help you with that. So of course, when it comes to jump kicks in general, whether it's a spin or or a normal jump, there's a few things you need to take into account. So we're going to talk about exercises, we're going to talk about awareness, we're going to talk about technique as well. Okay. As always, before you practice anything like this, make sure you're warmed up well enough and uh, follow along with me as best you can. But let's let's start with something. Fairly simple. Let's, let's talk about the jumping uh, turning kick. Now, with this kick, there are a few matters involved that need to be covered, and it's really important that you watch and pay attention to the technique more than anything else. So, first of all, we'll talk about exercises that help with jump kicks in general. Um, obviously, there's a lot of emphasis placed on your quadricep muscles, your calf muscles, and to some degree, your glutes and your hamstrings as well. So I'm gonna go through some brief exercises that you can use on a daily basis to just help stimulate those muscles and encourage them to be more explosive and to get you off the ground a lot easier. So of course, um, each exercise will apply to juniors and adults. Of course, adults, if you want to add a bit of weight to the exercise you're doing, then that's fine. Obviously juniors, I don't recommend you do that. Just rely on your own body weight at this stage. But um, from here, obviously normal squats, but the uh, precipice is that you have your shoulder width apart, you go down at 90 degrees, and you, you try not to let yourself go to there and back up again. You need to give the muscles the full stimulant. So to do that, back straight, hands in your head or behind your head, doesn't really matter. If you're struggling to keep your back straight, then I recommend putting your hands here because it just encourages your lower back to pull in. Okay, and then from there, you go down at 90 degrees and back up. Now, you should do as many as you can, do it to failure. Okay, so muscular failure. Um, of course, if you're adding weight, really important that you take nice steady reps and you keep your back straight. In terms of how you can do that, um, the majority of the time when I'm practicing, I tend to use something like this that just sits comfortably across the shoulders, but you can use a medicine ball. Uh, you can also use a kettlebell um, as, as some examples that Mr. Tando showed in a, in a previous video. Um, even a, a five litre water bottle would do it. But in any case, you don't have to add weight. It's only if you want the extra challenge. Or if you feel like you know you you develop strong enough quadriceps that you you feel like you need the challenge, okay? So you've got normal squats. Of course, jump squats are a must. So get into position, squatting down, and practicing tucking the knees in. So this kind of goes hand in hand with the awareness side of it. When we talk about awareness and jump kicks, we mean um, taking off, landing. We also mean air time as well. Now air time is probably one of the most important factors because the longer you're in the air for, the more chance you have of pulling off a clean as well as successful kick. Now, we're not talking levitating in the air for a couple of minutes, okay? We're talking split seconds. Now split seconds make an awful lot of difference, but you'll see why in a second. So from here, we need to practice jump squats. Again, same principle, back straight, hands in your head if need be, but when you jump, You've got to be drawing those knees up, okay? If you practice doing jump squats and then do this, you're flicking your heels up, you're not getting any air time at all, okay? And after a while, that can be quite compromising on your knees. So what you should be doing is going down, but trying to draw the knees up as high as you can when you jump, all right? So that way you'll get a bit more time. So it's squat down, like so, okay? It takes a lot of practice to do. Now, if you to build that up, you can start just by squatting down, bouncing off the balls of the feet like this, so it gets the calves more involved. But in general, that's what you should practice. Uh, if you're gonna hold any weight, adults, during a jump squat, just be really, really careful with your legs, make sure you've got a distance apart. But uh, I don't recommend doing that until you're confident and comfortable with that move by itself. Okay, and um, another important muscle group is the calves. Now, the calves may not seem like they do a lot, but they support your ankles and your knees around here. Okay, so when you're performing jump kicks, you actually have an emphasis placed on boosting yourself off of the ground. So, 
one of the top exercises. Uh, you can do this um, up and using steps up and down, so you have like a uh, an incline as such. But from here, very very simple. Just go up onto the balls of the feet, and then without letting your heels touch the floor, you just go up and down like that. Now it takes a, a fair few reps to get it going, but what you'll feel is a, a tight burning sensation in the top of your calf. And with this one, you want to do that as many times as you can until you can't do another one. Okay, if you're going to do it down steps, then what you need is you step there, you stand on the edge of it, and you go right down so your heel, so if this is the step, your heel passes the line of the step that you push up, just be really careful when you're doing that, obviously. But um, that will help to encourage the, uh, the spring of the calves. And also you can, it looks pretty crazy, obviously, but you, you can also practice just springing up and down. Like, that to really give the calves a good shock but I recommend we, we do a lot of practice with our legs anyway in lessons okay but if you want to give yourself that little bit extra practice train your legs hard and train them regular okay specific to what you're trying to achieve now there are obviously other muscles involved like the core the back some degree of the upper body but it's mainly the legs that you should be concerned about okay so that's exercises now let's go back to awareness again awareness as I said was about how you take off, how you land, and uh, about your air time as well. So there's a few drills you can do to help you with this. And this is one of my absolute favorite drills. Now you can you, you have a square, okay, where you have an area, but what you're gonna be doing is turning 90 degrees, 180, 270, and 360. And this is a drill I always use when it comes to teaching someone how to improve their jump kicks, because if you can improve your awareness, and improve your understanding of how and how to jump up and land and the angle at which you need to be to kick, you're more likely to pull the kick off a lot more confidently, okay? So, this applies to jump kicks and jump spinning kicks in general, because this is a good one. But what you do is you stand in your square with your guard, if you haven't got a square, it doesn't matter, just, you know, just have a, an angle, all right, or something you can use to follow. And what you do is you first jump 90 degrees. Now it's really important that you practice both ways. So you go one way and then the other way. So I'll go this way for the first one. So you jump up and turn 90 degrees, but what you're trying to remember is the knees come up and you land both feet at the same time. You keep your guard up as well. So it's here, up, there. Okay, and then you come back to the beginning. And then when you've done that, you then do the same with 180. And of course, the further around it goes, the more challenging it is. So what that is encouraging you to do is to really pull those knees up. And very often when it comes to kick, uh, jump kicks, that's, that's where people struggle the most, is actually physically bringing their knees up. But the exercises I've showed before will help you to do that. But in general, uh, everybody, it's, all, it's just practice, okay? It takes a long time to get good at your jump, like really good at your jump kicks. So that was 90. So of course, when we're going 180, we need more air time, okay? So to do that, we need to spin faster and we need to draw our knees higher, okay? So it's here. Okay, and then you come back, 270 this time, but this, this is the peak point. This is for uh, spinning kicks in general, okay? Obviously jump kicks, depending on what kick it is, you don't have an, you don't have an awful lot of rotation to do, so it's nowhere near as difficult, but if jump spin kicks is one that you're trying to improve, then you need to take note of what I'm saying here. 270 is the peak point because if I'm facing you right now and you're my target, okay? Let's say I was gonna do a spinning side kick, Okay, we do our chamber. Okay, imagine I'm jumping right now. Okay, we go all the way around. But when we get to 270, all right, so we're 90 degrees off target, my knee is pointing offside, my foot is pointing at you. If I kick out now, it comes out nice and accurate. Okay, if I spin round and then kick whilst facing this way, okay, we get a, a scooping action or a back kick. If we do it obviously too way, way too late, okay then of course what we get is, is this. So you have to understand when to throw the kick out. Very, very important. It's all part of awareness, okay? So take note of that and practice it, but you, you jump spin 270, so you should land with this foot forward again. So you go all the way around. That one is a little bit hard, it takes more practice, okay? Then you've got 360. As you can imagine, that's up, round, and back to exactly as you were. It's the hardest of the bunch to do. Okay, so that's a drill for you to practice. You can also practice with a switch, but you can also do it with the same leg forward, but go the other way. So that's for those that really want to advance their jump spin, okay? So 
you've got the, some exercises, uh, you've got awareness, um, other drills you can do with that if you've got access to step up boxes, okay, is you can uh, practice jumping on and off to help the calves out. If you've got a reasonably high uh, stand or, or, or a stall or something you're quite happy and safe to jump over, then that's good as well. Just, just train your jump as many ways as you can. Um, you can also jump on top of something, jump off of it. So it all gears towards building up your understanding of your distance from kick to ground and so on and so forth, okay? And then there's technique. Now technique obviously matters overall, but uh, there are a few things you need to be aware of. Number one, posture, okay? So you need to make sure your body is nice and straight and going round if you're spinning or if you're just doing a jumping kick in general, make sure your body is at the line it should be, okay? So for instance, if you're gonna do a jump turning kick, the last thing you need is your body doing this, okay? If you're gonna do it, you have to make sure your body is upright and you really twist those hips around and have the guard up, all right? Now, it's a lot harder to do these kicks shadow or in front of nothing. So when you're doing jump kicks, practice on a paddle, particularly a paddle, as often as possible so you've got something to aim for. Okay, now you've got posture, then you've got your breathing, okay? When you, the more relaxed you are when you're doing a certain move, the more fluid you are, the less tension there is, so then there's less work for you to do to make it happen. Now the most common thing that happens is someone goes to do a jump kick and they go, <gasps> and then they, yeah, and then they try and do it. Now they all seize up and, and the, the muscles get overloaded with oxygen and it just makes it a lot harder for you to pull it off. Just relax a bit, okay? So breathe in, and then right before you take off, breathe out, but really harsh, okay? So it's like that. Practice that as well, because that will encourage you to time your breathing right, and it will allow you to link tension and relaxation and find that point in between where you need to be, all right? Um, it's the, you should be breathing out basically right before you jump or right before you hit the target. So in general, if it's, a, if it's any kick, your, your breathe out should be, or your expelling of oxygen should be right before you hit the target. Right before where the most tension or where most power is required, okay? So you've got posture, you've got your breathing. Um, also, you've got your air time. We talked a bit about that earlier, but it's, again, it's the difference between your heels flicking and your knees coming up. Practice bringing your knees up as much as possible. Tuck jumps are a good exercise for that, okay? To really get you working on them, okay? If you don't consider yourself very flexible and you struggle with that, it's okay. Just build it up slowly. You haven't got to be jumping up here to do a good jump kick. You just need to make sure your knees are coming up to the height that you're comfortable with and you're understanding your technique, okay? If you're throwing any uh, rotational kicks, such as a turning kick, think about where the kick's coming from, okay? Is it coming from here? Is it coming from here? Well, in this case, it's coming from here. So that means if it's coming from there, you need to get that round here when you're doing the kick. So make sure your body alignment's correct and you're twisting your hips as much as possible. Um, and uh, in, in general, just lots of lots and lots of practice. Um, when you do practice, as I said, make sure you're warmed up. All right, so you've got exercises, squats, jump squats, you've got calf raises, you've got jumping over obstacles, okay, tuck jumps. You've got awareness jumping, so you've got the angles drill I just went through with you, okay? Um, and also you've got your general practice of your technique. Make sure you use a target as often as possible. Paddles will work, wave masters are good, um, air shields are good, but as long as your partner is strong and capable of holding the pad properly. Um, but paddles are probably best for accuracy, and accuracy is really what you want at first. But um, anyway, give, give that a, a try the next time you're practicing your jump kicks, and. Uh, also, a, a quick one for you, try to blend it with other kicks. So for instance, if you're going to do a, a, spinny, a jump spin uh, crescent kick, I'd suggest you put a, a first crescent kick on front of it so that it gives you more momentum to pull the kick off. Uh, doing a jump kick by itself takes a lot of power and a lot of effort, and it can be done, but it's a lot easier when you have something uh, placed before it to make it flow better. So that's an example. Okay, so for instance, instead of just doing the one by itself, you would go, here, then here, just to you know get some momentum going. Okay, but well that's all I have for you there, guys. So uh, take as much of that in as you can. Like and share the video. Leave us a comment as usual. 
and uh, let us know how you get on with that training. Of course, you know, if anyone has any uh, suggestions as to a, a particular kick they want to see worked on or anything like that, more than happy to do that for you. But this was mainly uh, an advisory video just to do with all of your jump kicks, things just to help you uh, improve the technique further and make it a bit easier for yourselves. Anyway, take care of yourselves. As always, happy training, and um, we look forward to the next video on kicking work. Take care.